friends, welcome back to Road Just Traveled, where budget travel doesn't have to suck. Today we are talking about over tourism, which is when certain places of interest are visited by an excessive amount of tourists, leading to negative effects. Now, what are some places you think of when you think about over tourism? For me, I think about Bali, Hawaii, Santorini, Venice. And while these places depend on tourism as their main source of income, really it doesn't come without a price. Now you've probably heard that Venice is sinking, Hawaii's coral reefs are being bleached, Hawaii and Bali's water shortages, which I'm gonna talk about in a bit. And sadly, I could go on. And while this is meant to be an eye-opening educational video, I also want to equip you with how you can help this horrible thing that is happening, this phenomenon that has taken over many places in this beautiful world of ours. And if you're new here, I'm Jessie. And as a traveler, I have spent years figuring out how to travel cheaply while still having a blast. And every Sunday, I share that knowledge with you. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Now, I started reading about over tourism as a result of my recent trip to Maui, Hawaii. Basically, I booked a trip in the spring for July, and it was a slower time when I booked it. And given it was the end of their shoulder season, and people were still getting vaccinated. At the time, Hawaii had very strict mandates that required you to test negative before arriving to avoid quarantining, which given the costs of rapid tests being anywhere from $120 to $150 per person, it priced a lot of people out of an already expensive place to vacation in. But by summer 2021, if you are vaccinated, you are able to bypass the quarantine and the test policies and it got crazy. I've talked about this in other videos, but there were rental car shortages, which caused the prices of rental cars to be anywhere from $200 to $500 a day. And the Hawaiian government was incredibly stressed out about COVID outbreaks as they didn't really have the resources to manage them. But I had already booked my non-refundable trip and I had spent $3,000 on it without even getting there which given this is a budget channel, I do want you to subscribe and stay tuned as I plan on making a video about how much my entire trip costs. And it's pretty shocking and upsetting for me. Um, just so this will help you if you wanna go to Hawaii, it'll help you understand what to expect going in. But anyway, I dropped some cash. So I was gonna go on this trip. And a few days before I left, I posted a reel on my Instagram and in the caption, I mentioned that I was going to Hawaii. Somebody who didn't follow me or anything found it and commented something like, please don't come to Hawaii. They have shut off all the locals water to give to hotels and tourists. Now I completely scrubbed the internet to find an article about this and I didn't find a single thing. No news outlets were covering this. And so I'm, you know, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I removed the comment because I felt that maybe it was untrue and it was negative. And to be honest, I didn't want to hear that I shouldn't go to Hawaii because I had spent a lot of money on this trip. It was in two days and you know, the trip was going to happen. So I went on my trip as expected. The flight was full. I managed to find a rental car at a reasonable price for Hawaii. And by that, I mean, it was $120 a day, which was very expensive for eight days. And that airport was a mess. Restaurants were packed. It was pre COVID levels. It was, I think they said it was actually higher than pre COVID levels. And on our first day, a waiter told my husband and I that restaurants and businesses had to operate at a 75% capacity due to social distancing mandates. Yet the island was at 50% capacity. And if we wanted to go to restaurants popular for tourists, which we didn't really, it would have been a long wait and if you didn't have a reservation. And this was hard on locals and tourists. Tourists were frustrated that a simple thing like going out to a restaurant without an hour plus wait seemed impossible. Locals were stretched very thin and didn't feel a lot of respect from tourists. Now, after a couple of days of experiencing the craziness of Maui, I kept thinking about this comment that I got. I did more digging and after a lot of research, still couldn't find an article, but I found a tweet by a local of a picture of a news broadcast asking locals to conserve water by not watering their lawns. 
and if they did water their lawns, it would be punishable by a fine. So if you were in a residential area, you would see brown lawns. However, every resort and business had these lush green lawns and beautiful gardens, so I guess it didn't really apply to them. This got me thinking about over-tourism. You know, we've all seen the same photos of Bali where they have Instagram tours where they take you to popular areas and have photo services. You can rent those giant long ass dresses in Santorini and it includes a photographer to take this totally ridiculous photo of you. And not to mention the road to Hana, which we decided to not go to because we heard there was insane traffic and it was affecting locals. They weren't able to get in and out of their homes and people were illegally parked on the streets to go see the waterfalls and go on the hikes and the locals were not having it. And while I was definitely contributing to over-tourism in my trip to Hawaii, I couldn't do a whole lot while I was there, aside from you know, supporting local businesses, which we really tried our best to do. But here is what you can do to alleviate some of the pains from over-tourism. For many popular tourist destinations in which one season is their biggest time, it's often feast or famine for the locals. Peak seasons are crazy busy, the work is great, the money's rolling in, only for that all to slow down in the off season. And you know, if you've been watching this channel or subscribe to this channel, whatever, uh, you know I love off season travel. It's often cheaper, it's less crowded, and in this case, you're helping support locals at a drier time. Another thing you can do is be really careful renting Airbnbs and make sure you are renting from locals. This is a tough one, because if you've followed me for a while, you know that I love Airbnbs. There is a huge negative impact of Airbnb on the tourism economy. And I actually have a video coming up on this very soon, so wait on that. Um, but basically, big companies or the uber wealthy non-locals are buying entire buildings and condo complexes or several homes to rent out and just raking in the cash. Now this can drive home prices up, be it owning or renting, and it just really messes, I was trying to say F's over locals without swearing and getting demonetized, but it F's over locals. Now if you go the Airbnb route, check the photos, read the reviews, check the page of the host and make sure they are a local and that you are truly renting a room out of that person's house or maybe their house while they're at their significant other's house rather than it being this large company or this corporation that has multiple listings. If you wanna visit France, maybe skip out on Paris, visit the countryside. You know, make sure you know the basics of their language or you have Google Translate handy. And uh, if you go to a city, check out some of the local businesses and things that you can do on the outskirts of town or the less touristy areas. You can support local businesses. You can stay in the local boutique hotels rather than the Hilton. Uh, that company has enough damn money. And speaking of local businesses, you can opt for local restaurants and local activities. You know, you don't need to go to the House of Wax, the House of Wax. It's the Wax Museum. <laughs> the House of Wax is that horrifying movie. All right. Anyway, you don't have to go to the Wax Museum or to the godforsaken M&M store, which if you've been following me for a while, you know, I really don't speak kindly on the M&M store. Personally, I've never been, but I feel like I know what to expect. When my husband and I were in Paris, we did an Airbnb experience with a small business where we made our own hats. Now by doing so, we supported a little couture Parisian hat shop and we came out with a great souvenir that I love telling people about it when they talk, compliment my hat. When I wear it, there's always someone that's like, oh my God, I love your hat. And I'm like, thanks, I made it in Paris. <laughs> God, I'm annoying. <laughs> Anyway, I had a great experience. I'm not saying I've never done anything touristy ever, but in the very least, I try to have a little balance of touristy things, museums and stuff, and fun things to do that also support local businesses. 
Wear mineral sunscreen if you're going out into the ocean so you aren't destroying the coral, which is the culprit of the bleached coral. If you go out in the wild, be it a jungle or an ocean, don't touch or feed the wildlife. Don't litter. Don't go somewhere just to drink or do drugs. Do that sh at home. You know, Amsterdam is such a beautiful city and the Netherlands is amazing. And to reduce it to a place where weed and shrooms are legal is a shame. When I was in Amsterdam, I briefly walked through the red light district because I don't know, I was like, you, you gotta see it, right? You just walk through for 15 minutes. And it happened to be a Friday night. Oh my God, I was absolutely disgusted by the drunk idiots acting like complete hooligans, yelling and drinking and smoking in public and littering and, you know, harassing these women that are just trying to make a little bit of money and make a living. So don't take their pictures. Oh my God, for various reasons. If, you, if you're going to Amsterdam and you're gonna go to the red light district, don't take their pictures aside from it being wrong. There are people that will throw cups of pee on you. The like men that are in charge. I don't know, I don't wanna call them pimps because I feel like that's not what they're officially called. But the people watching, the men watching, will throw pee on you. They have cups of pee on the ready. I don't know, that's just what I've heard. Haven't experienced it. Anyway, if you're gonna post your trip on social media or share stories with friends, be sure to highlight things to do and places to go that are owned by locals. You know, promote locals, help the local economy that isn't the Weston or the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and above all, understand that this is someone's home. Whether it's animals, plants, humans, there are living beings depending on that environment. Be mindful of that. Don't disturb the peace. Don't waste resources. Reuse, recycle. Avoid single-use containers, especially styrofoam, which is causing global warming, basically. <laughs> and by God, don't take photos of locals without asking them, especially if it doesn't paint them in a good light, especially if they are struggling. You know, don't, don't go someplace, and don't go to Skid Row in LA and take pictures of homeless people just to like post your Instagram that you're hashtag blessed and humbled. <laughs> just don't do it. And those are my tips. Did any of these resonate with you? How do you feel about them? Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. That would really help me out. Now I post new videos every Sunday, so don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week. Happy travels. I just filmed about six minutes of footage and I realized after that I was completely out of focus. Is that what kind of day today's gonna be like? Oh, this video is definitely gonna have a blooper reel, that's for sure. Hawaii and Bali's short water, a place like Venice, Italy, that has major tourism going crazy all the time. I wish there was a more eloquent way to say that, but just places that have crazy tourism. I just gotta look up the definition, I feel. Okay, let's do this. Take 12, basically. It's time for, uh, let me go back.